All right, guys, we are now loading onto the rift for the final game of the evening between the trying to get back into that second place spot, raving Raptors fighting for their lives against one man team. Ender, would you like to introduce the first team? I would, but we might see an early invade here. I'm going to give it a pause here because Thresh is going on in. He's going Ooh. in. He the hick on. <laughs> the hick. The <laughs> on to Skarner there. So, doesn't have any follow up, but they're still sticking around, sitting on top of a ward now, I believe. Yeah, close stuff looking for it, but this is when we get to give them the rundown. It's Raving <laughs> Raptors on the blue side with Gruntless Gary in the top lane, Vortex in the jungle, Mechanix at mid, Big Hobbit on AD Carry, and Zookeeper Raka at support. And on the red side, we have one man team. In that top lane, we have White Karama bringing in that Jace. We have the Hitman 14 on Rek'Sai. Van Me bringing in that Star Guardian Flex right there. I wish that we also saw that on GG, who is playing Jinx over in the AD carry role with Gigo Kink on Thresh. Yeah, definitely a fun matchup to see. I, I just love seeing all the support. Raving Raptors, clearly mm -hmm. the fan favors, mm -hmm. uh, as le at least in Twitch chat right now. But yeah. Gary, he's already getting forced away from this lane. He might get actually zoned yeah. out of experience for this. Yeah, and that's really smart from White Karama on that one. He can really bully around uh, Gary. Huh? So trying to do what you can to bully him out of lane is going to be the best thing you can do, especially as early as possible. Yeah, I think he could have actually pressured a little bit harder mm -hmm. right there. Kennen starting with the W level 1 is really low DPS because he mm -hmm. has to build up the stacks uh, on his on his autos to get that passive mark mm -hmm. on in there. Ends up getting a little bit of damage traded back in, but Kurama had the potential there to zone Gary away, force mm -hmm. him to loop all the way back around get to get into top lane and potentially get a massive experience advantage off of it. Yeah, I think he was afraid that he was going to lose a lot of experience on that one as well. Look, there we go. That's the kind of thing we're going, ooh, Good misses juke. the Empowered Shock Blast, though. That that would have almost been lane ending right there if he'd yeah. taken that Shock Wave, Shock Blast, mm -hmm. because as it is, he already has to burn through his potion. He's still not going to be full HP. He's going to be on the back foot, and he picked this matchup. He knew what he was mm -hmm. getting into, and I, I questioned it heavily in champs mm -hmm. like you did too, and yeah. it's already getting bullied around. Yeah, whenever you see a counter matchup, you, you like you pick into a counter matchup, you always just cringe inside mm -hmm. because that's, you shouldn't willingly do that unless you have something planned. Like I'm hoping Vortex, that they have though. something planned right now. Vortex, yeah, there's no wards. We see White Kodama is good. not warded up at all. This is really good for them right now. He needs pull to the trigger. Engage. Yeah, Go. Like, he needs to engage. He's been waiting way too long on this one. He's still just sitting there. I, here, here he comes. Oh, there it is. I think they're waiting. They're, oh, they he got flashed him. in there. Yep. He's stunned up right there. Who's going to get the kill? Nice. Gruntless Gary picking up the first blood. That's the punishment right there. Level 3 gank in the top lane. Jace has nowhere he can go. He let Kennen get that first mark uh, from the lightning rush there, which meant that the stun was simple. He flashed straight on in to a stun from Vortex, followed up by Gary's own. And ends up falling, goes back, picks up a null magic mantle. He was crushing that lane, but honestly, if I'm Vortex, I come straight back around yeah. once again. Both of them still have their flashes, and that's exactly what he's doing. Terrible exactly. teleport in from Karama. Yeah, with no war coverage at all, doesn't respect anything that uh, Vortex has been bringing in. I mean, even looking at the bot lane right now, Whoa. see uh, Gogi, uh, Gigo taking a lot of damage on that one as well. Oh, here we go. White Karama is in a bad situation. He tries to get in the ward. He's stunned up now. Let's see how much more damage That's they can another get kill. on the White Karama. They're trying to get the stun from Gruntless Gary. And wow. Another kill going over to Gruntless Gary. That's 2-0 on Kennen already. Oh, the battle Ooh, back in the bot. Hook coming in onto Big Hobbit. He goes down. And now Zookeeper Rocket, you're in a bad spot. Really well played by Hitman. Seeing that Vortex was in the top lane and going straight to the bot lane. Trying to get another a different lane ahead. Big Hobbit, no respect there out of the Ezreal. He arcane shifts straight on in there. Hitman is in the right place at the right time, and he holds on to both, both his summoner spells. <laughs> he doesn't use it to get away, no. even though Raving Raptors take a massive victory in the top lane. Look how much minions are being denied to Karama. Not only those two kills, but experience and gold as well. Yeah. But they lose out on the bottom half of the map, and that's that's not what you want to have happen if you're fighting desperately for this game. You have to win this one if you want to make yep. it out of the groups. Yeah, I'm not too surprised though that a big hobbit held on to his summoners. He was he was already dead. 
Well, there's you just gotta you flash can... the hook right at the bat, right off the bat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He should have flashed the hook, but the moment you get uh, hooked, you get you're already knowing you're gonna die. That's where you just don't you don't use anything. You mm -hmm. a smart move on that play. But you're right. You shouldn't have arcane shift forward so aggressively in that situation. There's no need for that, and he paid for it. Yeah, there were a couple steps along the way where it definitely could have gone in this favor, but all of a sudden, top lane, we're looking at a very different matchup than that we would have expected. Mm -hmm. Karama can no longer punish this Kennen. The very early, uh, the very early Hextech Revolver there means that the trades are going to go in Kennen's favor, and he will be the first one to hit level 6, and as soon as he gets that, he can just straight up all in Karama. Karama has no flash, that won't be up in time for that, and uh, mm -hmm. the all-in potential from Kennen is very scary once he does have the Maelstrom. I'm not going to lie, just looking at the map right now, if I was Vortex, I'd go back to the top lane. Honestly, yeah. You, you can just continue to bully that, especially you synergize that so you come top right when Gary hits 6. Karama, right now he can't even farm in that lane because Gary's gotten such a beautiful freeze set up. There, there's only one option right now for one-man team to, to make it out of that, and that's to send Hitman into the into the top lane to force that wave all the way under turret reset that but hitman doesn't recognize that play and he's going to the bottom half of the map karama has nothing he can do now yeah i think another the other play that they're looking at right now is possibly getting the jinx rolling a uh, very good champion but i talk about that hyper carry of jinx once you get her to the late game it, she's ridiculous so they might be just forfeiting the top lane thinking let's get dg as far ahead as possible Kurama, I'm so sorry, you are useless this game. Like, not that I'm saying you're useless, but that's how the team is focusing this. Yeah. It, it's, it is a good sign, though. There is one extra ranged, uh, ranged minion in the wave that Gary has built up, so it will slowly but surely push on into Kurama's turret eventually. But the play is definitely here in the bottom lane, oh, and that's right, the TP that I was talking player. about! But but he's gonna get cancelled, I think. Yes, the chase uh. does cancel, and now we see Vortex coming in there. They get the stun onto Hitman. Are they gonna be able to get him? No, they're not. But Gruntless Gary able to make the trade onto Karama in the top lane. Fantastic! As Rome from a Hanix coming down, getting Hitman under the tower. Now there's the Ignite being dropped onto him. We see that Gogi wants to get this. Are they gonna have the damage? Yes, they do. DG picks up the kill onto Mahanix, which was a little too far. But even then, r the Raving Raptors, they win out in the trade across the map. Banmi has to make this happen if they want to get any form of advantage because they're losing top turret as we speak. He misses the final spark. Yeah, I was going to be surprised, honestly, if he hit that one because he didn't get the stun. He got the slow for a little bit, so a little bit of damage on to Vortex. But that's the thing about Skarner. He's, he, he's a slippery scorpion. <laughs> He definitely is. He also didn't have his Impale. He's not quite level 6, which would have massively turned that that uh, that play in the bottom lane in their favor. Gruntless Gary, the teleport wasn't even necessary because, quite honestly, it was a bait. It forced yep. Karama to come on to him, and that just meant that the ultimate was available and Gary could just all in right there. Yep. Such a brutal time for Karama in the top lane. Yeah, and it was smart on... Uh... Uh, gruntless carry on that one baiting in Kurama like you said just trying to get get him in because it's you cancel the teleport there's three people who will die in the bot lane you I know, if you don't cancel the teleport three people will die in the bot lane you yeah. cancel it you die as well you, you have to go for the cancel you have to sacrifice your life and even though you're doubled in CS almost even though you're zero and three and you're never going to be relevant in this game because let's face yeah. it a Jace that gets behind in the laning phase has a very difficult time at coming mm -hmm. back in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to accept the loss and do your best to let your team try to win out on their own by yeah. pinning Gary in your lane. Right. And that's why I said, I, not no offense to Karama, but he, that's how the role he's been delegated <laughs> is. He, he's been delegated the role of, I'm sorry, you lost <clears throat> lane pretty hard. You're now useless. All you can do is keep Gruntless Gary from being able to use a slicing maelstrom to really impact the fights. It's just disgusting. Look at this. It's a completed proto belt up against components just trying to build a hex drinker. He can't even finish it. That's how far down and out of this one he is at the moment. And Gary with the ultimate, Karama knows he can't even get close anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's playing it smart. He's doing what you have to do if you're down. He's just jungling some of the farm, trying to sell. Oh, that's a kill! Oh, Mahanix, though, with the mechanics, getting Van Me in the mid lane. 
Is uh, is that mechanics so though? He just pressed Q a couple of times, and pressed R and banned me. Didn't even use the, the barrier. You take the barrier to negate a whole lot of the burst that Syndra is able to provide, but you drop right there. Now mid lane turret is under fire. I feel like it's been the same story every single game of the day. It's the teams who prioritize these towers that end up winning hard in the long run. And Hitman, he's just getting all in. Hitman is getting all in on that one. Really well done. I don't know why he stayed for so long. And the reason I say me uh, mechanics with the mechanics is because that is the mechanics of Syndra, is you press <laughs> the button. It's <laughs> yeah, you just get down a lot of balls on the ground. Once you get 6-7, get the max damage you possibly can there. And I don't know, is this mid turret going to drop? Yep. It will. Yep. Oh. I would, I would have been surprised if they weren't able to get that right there. They were definitely pressuring to try to get it as fast as they could. And they couldn't give it just to mechanics like they would have liked to. But at the same time, first tower gold is first tower gold. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get the second turret gold very, very soon. Mm -hmm. Top lane is quite vulnerable. And honestly, all you have to do if you're Raptors, you look at the, the cooldowns you have right now. Mm -hmm. When you're prioritizing which lane to go to next, there's top and bottom. Gary doesn't have teleport yet, so take your pressure, put it into the top lane, knock that down. By the time you get that turret, which is exactly where Vortex is going right at the moment, teleport will be available. You can get a deep ward in the bottom lane and look for your final outer turret yeah, of the game. I love this from the Raptors. They're so yeah. good. Yeah, but look at the roam in the bot lane, though. We do have Hitman and Banmi going in for this. They're, oh, and Kurama actually wait a minute. Kill. They went way too far in that top lane, trying to get Kurama as well in the bot lane. We see a really good zone coming in from the side of one man team, able to pretty much push away Mechanics so that he couldn't defend Big Hobbit and Zookeeper in the bot lane. And this might be a dragon if they play it right. Yeah, that's one way to throw your early advantage in the top oh. lane. Can yeah, they find it? We see the ghost being used by Mechanics. He wants to get the kill on oh. the baby. They're really oh. close on that one. Are they going to be able Zookeeper! to get Zookeeper! Getting the kill, but now he's put himself in a really bad spot. They're going to try to keep him alive as best they can. He's burning from the ignite. He is going to be able to make No it way! And now we see DG forced to use the heal himself as the Hanix is turning it back around, trying to see if they can get it. Scared of the weekend. Oh! Kill, getting go, uh, Gigo and DG as well. That's Mechanics with the mechanics right there. Did you see that insane three-man stun to keep Zookeeper Raka alive? Then they kite it out, turn it around at the exact right moment, and Raving Raptors after a 30-second time frame where it looked like they were getting a little unsettled, looking for a bit too much and falling behind. They get the kills, they get the dragon, and the top lane turret is just icing on the cake. Wow, what a play. You are right, the mechanics there. Just pulling it out, saving Zookeeper Raka, who made sure to secure the kill. In that play, I think it was on Ban Me, right? He got secured it onto Ban Me. And yeah. Then just, yeah, and then the turnaround was beautiful, coming in from mechanics, as well as Big Hobbit, really just doing what they could to poke out damage onto one-man team, and then when they had the chance, they turned it around beautifully. <laughs> Why Kurama? I mean, he's down two levels, but at least he's trying here. Gruntless Gary didn't quite have the, mm -hmm. the Maelstrom available, so it wasn't like he could all-in him just yet, even though he yeah. does have such a massive advantage in this top lane. Once again... It's up to the Raptors now. How can they extend this gold lead? There's no objectives on the map, so it's going to fall into this sort of lull once again. But they have the pick potential. They have the teamfight potential. And if you look at the ward, you see that ward behind the one-man team uh, bot lane tier 1 turret. That's yeah, what that. you're looking for. You're looking to shove in this bottom lane, get a teleport in from Gary. Just make yeah. sure your TP doesn't get canceled this time around because that could be the fight that just ends this game. Mm-hmm. That really could, and I think that's, you're right, that smart play that they have right now, they have good warding coming on the side of Raving Raptors, and honestly, you if you're a one-man team, you gotta respect that, oh ooh, boy, right now, the jungle's not even your jungle, I'm sorry, Hitman, you've lost your rights to your own jungle, you go down for free on that one, and we did see Gigo trying his best to keep him alive, but there was really not much you could do. I mean, Mechanics didn't even use the Unleashed Power right there. That's how strong they are at the moment. Now, because they go 
proactively get the deep vision, take out Hitman mm. to start things off. They don't need Gary to teleport in. They simply use their bodies as the tools to create pressure. One man team, they can't get close to that turret to clear away the waves because just look at the positioning from the Raving Raptors. Ooh, DG's they, they gone. On to DG right there. He does flash away. Here comes the tidal wave. They're looking for more of the unleashed power, picking up the kill on DG. Bye? I, I, you're gone. I, I, I don't even know what to say. DG was there and then he disappeared. The turret goes down as well, and the pressure is not going to stop. This is absolutely unrelenting here from the Raving Raptors. They came in here with a mission. They have to win this game if they want a chance to make it out of groups, and that is exactly what they are doing here, pressuring all the lanes at once and making it count. Yeah, and I think the most important thing is the fact that Gruntless Gary didn't get behind, and in fact got ahead. Yeah. Really well done from Vortex on that one, making sure to keep him ahead. And now, it, honestly, what it did, it made it so they have so much map pressure. And they're able to look at this tier 2 right now. Zookeeper Rocket taking really low right now. Heal coming in from Big Hobbit and trying to keep him alive. But we see the teleport from Right Karama getting the kill. As now, Hitman uh, man is really low. Mechanics does secure the kill with the flash coming in on that one as well as the ghost. They are looking for more. They might look for Banmi. No, they don't actually go. They know that... Bammy still has a lot of damage that he can bring, as White Karama trying to secure a kill on the Gruntless Gary, but he goes down. <laughs> Hitman just got killed by his own cannon minion being thrown into his face. I don't know if there's a worse way to go out than that. That just feels absolutely terrible right there. 1-4-1 one, and one on the Rek'Sai, side, not able to get nearly as big of an early game impact as Vortex. Vortex, the early gank top lane was good. The repeat gank was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Completely broke open that top lane matchup, and ever since, it's been a, an uphill battle for one-man team that they cannot overcome. They're down 9,000 gold at 17 minutes. This might be the biggest gold lead we've seen today at this point in the game. Yeah, I I, I, we've seen some pretty big... We've seen some big ones. Every game's been a blowout, but this one is just yeah. in a league of its own. <laughs> this one really is, and it was a match that we honestly thought would be a lot closer between yeah. these two teams. So it is kind of surprising to see how one-sided this is so far gone. And I really don't know if I see it any other way, because we talked about in Champ Select how this is a team fight team versus a lane team. And the lane team lost in the lane. Mm -hmm. so when you lose in lane as a lane team, it's not looking so hopeful for you. Right, we, we had a lot of questions about what they were going to be able to do, and once again, Hitman's just oh, getting dragged Hitman in. He's just getting dragged in, but there is the Dark Passage trying to get see if he can take it right now. As we saw the Tidal Wave trying to help secure the kill, but is Gruntless going to go in for this one? They use the Unleashed Power to get the kill onto Hitman, and now White Karama, he got exhausted as well, and... Still, they're just fighting over this red buff right now. I don't know who they're trying to give it to. They gave it to Mechanics. Hey, I, it honestly doesn't even make a difference here. Karama, I mean, now he's going for the, the flanks yeah, with the Jace, but it's just not how you want to make it happen. He gets Ooh. chunked out and has to back away. But honestly, the the Lantern, the Dark Passage, there was a nice gesture from Gigo, uh, but it was straight into a, into a Syndra. <laughs> right. I thought they were going to engage more onto that one. Yeah, it was. It, <laughs> it really was. And it... It was more just good uh, pathing coming in from Mechanics on that one, trying to see where he can get in and cut off and do as much damage as humanly possible as the Syndra. He's now 9-1-1 one, and one on that Syndra. It, it, it's just not even close at this point no. in the game. Ban me didn't get destroyed in the lane phase. He's 0-2-0. He's zero zero. He died on the roam, I want to say, and then he did get yeah. killed that one time in the middle lane solo. Mm. Uh, but... It, it just, it hasn't impressed. The Lux pick was supposed to be something different, something that can be impressive and change the way we think about that mid lane matchup mm -hmm. into the Syndra. But at, at this point, you'd rather just have a, a Vladimir that can tank up the damage and be a big beefy frontliner for your mm -hmm. team because right now you don't have anyone that can really take on that role. Rek'Sai mm -hmm. would be fantastic to be mm -hmm. able to tank up damage, but he's just so weak right now that all he has is a Syndra Hulk and that's just not enough to cut it at this point in the game. She. Rek'Sai is a she. Oh, Wait. boy. Please, you triggered me. <laughs> see, see, I always fall in that. See, maybe I'm just thinking about Hitman as a he. Oh, there okay, we okay. go, there we go. Okay, okay now I'm not... The recovery. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think more important in the mid lane matchup is honestly the summoners. Oh, the, boy. Ooh, look at this. Oh. Coming in the wombo combo of the slicing mail storm and the tidal wave. Ban me very low on that one. Are they going to be able to get him? I think they're looking... 
for mechanics to be able to pick up that one. The ghost does secure the kill. The fade away. Over onto that one. There is the unleash power to get that triple kill easy on DG. Yeah, that's just the wombo combo of Syndra and anyone else who may be on her team. Because that is just way too much damage right there. 12 kills on the Syndra mechanics. This guy's a monster. Like I said earlier, mechanics with the mechanics. It's... I, you might say that it's not that much mechanic pushing one button, but at the same time, it, that 12 1 speaks otherwise. Yeah, when, when, when you have that many kills, when you have that many items, that much gold, you don't need to press more than one button <laughs> right now. You just straight 100 to 0 anyone that might step in your path. The, the Mountain Drake is great for them. They're going to be able to knock this game down quicker, break open the base, but honestly, any more advantages they get in this game. Are, are, are just that. They don't need yeah. them. It's just a little bit extra to help them close out 30 seconds faster. And oh, White Karama... White Karama oh. with the flash and pale onto him right there. He's going to go down. I don't know who... The, Mahanix... Nope, they gave it to Vortex, actually. Mahanix <laughs> doesn't need any more kills at this point. <laughs> this is when the, the complete opposite of the standard. This is completely a, apart from the norm. But the mid laner is now donating kills over to the jungler. Of all things, and it's a Skarner. It's not even a carry jungler, although his build might indicate otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, didn't you, haven't you ever played those solo queue games where there's that person who's like 25 and 3, and then they get really upset when you take one kill? Yeah, I have. Kills are, but kills are just irrelevant on you at that point. You, like, you're, you're so far ahead. You're a full item and a half apart from Ban Me, your counterpart. It, it's just... I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I, I don't know what more to say here because Raving Raptors, they they control this jungle. One man team, they don't have a jungle anymore. They don't have lanes anymore. They have a base. And even that is only holding on by a thread. <laughs> well, I want to just really talk. Oh, Whoa. we have the engage going in right now. We see Vortex got hit by the hook right now. Final Spark doing a lot of damage all over the place, but Gruntless Gary gets into the back line. They get a kill with the Slicing Maelstrom, helping to secure that one. Mechanic's getting another kill, as well as Zookeeper securing a kill for them. Oh, big hobbit. Ooh, big hobbits. And Mechanic's taking really low on that one, too. They need to back out of this one. Sure, we do see that DG is really low as well, but they are, too. One good Shock Blast could pick up a kill for them. It was a really awkward place to fight, too, for the Raving Raptors there. They're in between two towers. Grunkless Gary flashed over the wall to dive on the enemy back lines. Yes, they do win by, by all means there. They go two for none. With their flashing HP bars, they have to back away. And they had a lot of gold in their pockets as well. So maybe that was why uh, the fight was a little bit closer than it really should have been. I really want to talk about the most disgusting thing that I've seen from that gold chart, and that's the discrepancy between Mechanix and Ban Me. That is 5k gold. Oh my, he's doubling. Those. Yes. <laughs> that, between those two players, there's 5k gold difference. I mean, that that's half the gold lead that Raving Raptors have. It's not a huge surprise, considering that yeah. Mechanix has 13 kills, but just putting that advantage in actual numbers as far as gold mm -hmm. is considered is uh, just mind-boggling to think about. It really is. And now look at this. White Karama, he is forced to flash out of that one. He actually may be able to get out of that one alive. We see Vortex taking really low. The final spark trying to finish him off, but he's going to actually get out of that one. Is the Super Mega Death Rocket there? No blocked by a big hobbit helping out his team all the while gruntless gary in the bot lane pushing trying to get towards that inhibitor tower vortex is full damage right now he has no resistances built up whatsoever and still somehow he survives it just goes to show how weak one man team are right now they don't have any powerful items ban me went for the abyssal scepter doesn't have morella nomicon yet does no damage there white karama isn't doing much either and DG he was the one shining light I guess for one man team in the early game yep. but even then he's been focused out he's been pressured out so hard that now he's losing in CS he's losing in gold against his counterpart just because of all the turrets that raving raptors have been able to mm -hmm. acquire over the last 20 minutes yeah when you have five turrets to zero the gold is definitely gonna be heavily skewed against you yeah, and not to mention that the kills, the dragons, mm -hmm. there's nothing that one-man team are actually winning out in right here. No lanes are winning in CS. None had a good showing in the early game, to be honest. And yet another turret is going to be focused down by Raving Raptors, moving from lane to lane to lane, absolutely chunking away at the base, chipping away at the defenses. And one-man team, they're struggling to hold on.
Well, I, I there's a CS lead. Thresh has more CS than Nami. <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that comment. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's a significant gold lead too. It's like twenty. Oh, about, man, me, you're caught out in a bad way. He goes down. Mahanic picking up the kill on that one. Good. GG trying to go in on that one, but he's way too far. We see Gruntless Gary in the back line with the three-man slicing Maelstrom, picking up the kill on a DG, and now Hitman's the next target. They're looking to see if they can't get another kill into their pockets. He, the Scatter of the Week hitting onto two members. There's Mahanix with the finishing blow onto Hitman. You know, it's a rainy day where I'm at right here, but I'm beginning to think it might just be the tears of one man team and all the other squads that have come onto the stream here today and lost in horrific fashion. Raving Raptors, one of the last of four teams, honestly, to absolutely put the beating on their opponents here. We have yet to have a close game all day, and yeah. as we're finishing out the night, uh, it doesn't look like it's ever Ooh, gonna happen. Oh, DG! They did it! They get a kill. They got it! They did it, Reddit. We're good, boys. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the best you're hoping for right now. Those nice little plays back to back, but other than that, what can you do? You can try and steal a Baron, stall things out, and yes, if you, if you make it to the very, very late stages of the game, you have a chance just because of death timers if you can get a pick or whatnot. But even then, I feel like the scaling isn't really in their favor. Ezreal is going to be a monster in the late game, going to go untouched by anyone on one man team. And you've already seen Mechanics. He's already achieved a late game. He's just <laughs> sitting at three and a half items right now. <laughs> the only shining light for the late game that uh, one one man team has is on DG in that jinx but that's it that's not that's not really good when you have one and only one i mean even then you've lost two inhibitors and DG is still down in items up against Big Hobbit. It's just a matter of time before Raving Raptors claim that Baron. I believe they have two Mountain Drakes under mm -hmm. their belts yeah. right now. So and They're it, looking for Gruntless Gary right now, but that leaves their base open. Yeah, it, it's nice, though. One man team did get time to put some wards down. Oh, is he just going to solo out DG? Yes. He wants to solo, solo it out. No. Actually, getting sniped <laughs> away from the shoot, true shot barrage. Honestly, they can just shove in mid lane and end this one right oh, here. Gronless Gary is killing like Karama. Karama right there. He's using the sli slicing maelstrom, trying to see if he can get it. Is he going to be able to get the shuriken? No, nope. oh. but getting another kill. Man, that man knows how to snipe. <laughs> He's come a long way from his <laughs> hole in the hill there. Oh, and the Zookeeper Soraka getting in a, securing a kill too. Now we might see an Ace, they're trying to see if they can't pick it up. No, Gigo and Hitman sitting in their fountain. They know that they've lost this game. The Nexus is going to fall. Raving Raptors picking up the kill they desperately needed. Big Hobbit took a, a journey all the way across Middle Earth right there to pick up one of the final kills of the game onto White Karama. Just under 28 minutes into the game, Raving Raptors secure at least a shot at continuing into the postseason here. Again, they do need to win their final match, but mm -hmm. their opponents that they face off against next week, the 10th Legion, are sitting at 0-2, and two, and they did lose to one-man team, so odds are in their favor now. And if you're one-man team, you're just, you're just hoping for the best. You have to hope that Raving Raptors lose that match because things are out of your control now. Yeah, they really are, and that's... That's just not something that you want to hear. <laughs> That's never something you want to have. It's like, oh, we have to, we have to hope that not only do we win the, our game, but the other team loses theirs. Because it, even if they win the game, and then we see uh, Raven Raptors also win, that's well, that'd be an interesting tie actually, because that'd be a two-one for three teams, and that means each team oh, has true. beaten the other, and each team's beaten the other one in those three. Well, that would be interesting. They'd have to be a good tiebreaker for that. Yeah, that would be a fun one to watch. We'll see how the groups end up fizzing out over the course of the next week. We'll know exactly who's making it to the the postseason after that. But just looking at the damage charts, yes, yeah, Syndra by by far and away does the most. But the one that surprises me is actually Jace. White Karama did the most on his team after starting the game 0-3, and three, which is a complete surprise for me. And uh, props to him for being able to still do damage even after getting absolutely destroyed after some repetitive ganks up there in the top lane. Yeah, I think that's partly why he was able to get so much damage is that when so many people are throwing at you and you're just trying to deal damage all over the place, 
I mean, sure, you're going to hurt people, but you're never going to get the kill. Yeah, it was just a little bit unfortunate. Not enough for one man team to come out with the victory. Bottom lane looked like it was faring well at the start. They had a nice gank of pick onto Hobbit, but that was at the same time that Karama had already gotten taken out twice, and the real win for Raving Raptors was Mechanix absolutely dominating the map on that Syndra. But that'll do it here mm -hmm. for us this evening. On, yep. the, on behalf of AOC Cyber Series Masters, all our sponsors, me and Darrell, and my friend here, Magical Voice, uh, have a great night, and we will see you here back once again, same time, same place next week, for the finals of the group stages between these teams. See you then.